and so welcome viewers at uh, uh, CII Young Indians Career Partshala episode three and uh, today we have uh, with us uh, Subramaniam sir uh, who is a director in Cognizant and the topic for the day is cyber security and uh, uh, Career Partshala in uh, in its third day has got a, a phenomenal response from the student fraternity and uh, to take uh, we on the opening session was on the uh, with dr anand deshpande and uh, mr lavanam setting the context on employability yesterday we had a session on uh, how to build the resume and uh, how to face the interview today we are starting our first uh, industry expert talk on technology and uh, we thought of doing this with uh, something which is relevant and coming in a big way for the industry. Cybersecurity is uh, not uh, an upcoming technology. It is always a business in place and uh, no better than Subramaniam sir, who has uh, uh, committed a, a good time of his life seeing this uh, security and identification issues evolving and the need and uh, director of this uh, vertical at Cognizant. Uh, so we, we really thank Subramaniam sir for uh, taking out time and uh, and uh, uh, giving a consent that he will come to our career And uh, the students uh, uh, who will be viewing this session will take an advantage. Uh, not only the computer science IT student, but mechanical, civil, electrical ke bhi agar aap student. Hai, Cyber security, kya hota hai? We will try to cover it in general, but we will also try to go a bit deeper for some students taking in the questionnaire model. So uh, we also have with us Shreya Bansal, again a student of Ellen City College, and uh, she is also the UA head for climate change, a vertical of YI. And uh, we also have a lot of students from across. Uh, 50 cities of CII Young Indians UA uh, chapter and uh, YI is all about creating leadership and uh, youth leadership is one of the important vertical and important area where we work for. So on behalf of uh, CII Young Indians uh, YI Bhopal chapter and all the students, I express my gratitude to Subramaniam sir and welcome him uh, with, uh, with all my regards uh, to this show. I request uh, Shreya also to welcome sir and introduce the speaker for the day. Shreya, over to you. A very good afternoon to you sir today. I wholeheartedly welcome you on Career Patshala on behalf of whole student body. It is a great privilege to have you here to guide us in every way on today's topic. Thank you so much, sir, for taking out time to mentor all the viewers watching us today. Subramaniam, sir, has over 23 years of IT industry experience. He has demonstrated through successful engagements in BFS and healthcare domains. So has IT risk and control domain knowledge through a wide experience on multiple strategic programs. Subramaniam, sir, has delivered critical success stories in identity and access management, ops risk reporting and risk management. Sir is currently functioning as a competency delivery manager for Cognizance Identity and Access Management, COE responsible for capacity and capability building for all things IAM. I welcome you again, sir. We are so delighted to have you on board with us today. I got a lot of messages from my friends asking different questions and relevance of today's topic. Thank you so, uh, so much, Anut, sir. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Shriya. And welcome all uh, to this live uh, session. I'll uh, put forward what is what is cybersecurity and what is why is it so important and what is there in it for all of us. What are the benefits of pursuing a career in cybersecurity and what are the various things that each one of us as a student should have to pursue this career. And when I say as a student, it does not only include the audience here, it also includes me because learning never stops. So further to what Shriya has said, 
I too have graduated from an engineering college. I too went through the campus recruitment. I also started my career as a trainee, then did application development, then moved on to testing, then did functional analysis, then into the lead roles, and slowly as experience increases and as you show your competency, you will rise up the uh, career ladder. So the, it's very nice to uh, talk to you, and I hope that this uh, session provides you a window into what exactly cybersecurity is and why is it so relevant. So we can have this question and answers towards the end of the session, wherein we, uh, I will try my best to resolve all the queries that you have. Okay. So, sure. Yeah. So definitely so, cybersecurity is one of the important areas and um, um, in a generalized way, we would definitely want to like to know what it is and why it is very really important. So uh, we. Yeah. Yes. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. So uh, let me start uh, with what exactly is cybersecurity. Uh, so, uh, students and all the uh, our esteemed guests. Cybersecurity is nothing but securing your computer system. And when I say securing your computer system, it comprises of two parts. First is the physical security. Obviously, we have physical security at our home. In your college, you have physical security in your lab, and so on and so forth. But more important than physical security is information security. Whatever data that is available in today's internet world, Obviously, you cannot have that data available to people who should not be having access to that, right? For example, if I have a passport details, it is there. My passport details are there with the government of India in the passport office, and it is there with me. It is not supposed to be shown to everybody else. So there needs to be some security mechanisms in place in the computer world, in the internet world, such that only those people who need it should get it. Hence, the securing of the information that is available on the internet, securing of information that is available in the office environment, securing information that is available on any computer system is of utmost importance. And how do you enable that security? How do you ensure that the right people have the right access? And how do you ensure that the right data is shown to the right people? All this comprises of cybersecurity. Okay, so cybersecurity is nothing but an application of technologies, processes, and control that protect your IT systems, that protect your network, that protect your programs, that protect your devices, and most importantly, that protect your data. Right? Now, why is cybersecurity so important? For example, in this COVID world, when everybody is working from home, when everyone is connected over the internet, then thieves are everywhere. You can have physical thieves stealing physical things, or you can have thieves who will hack into your computer systems, who can hack into your mobile, who can hack into the uh, computer systems of your enterprises or colleges, and then steal the data. They can take the data and they can hold you to ransom. They can they can malign you in the social uh, in the social world. They can ask you for an enormous amount of money. So you need to protect yourself and you need to protect the information that is so valuable to you. And that is what that science of protection is nothing but cybersecurity. Okay. It is slightly different from information security because information can be on a physical medium. For example, if you throw your Aadhaar card or if you lose your Aadhaar card, then, then it is actually an information leakage wherein they know that hey, you have you have lost your Aadhaar card and somebody can impersonate you. But the same Aadhaar card, if it is on your computer system, then it can that leakage can spread everywhere and hence that is the difference between cyber security and information security. Okay, so let's, uh, if I can. So in today's world, what is happening is 
because everyone is connected the systems are connected people want uh, are using heavily mobiles people are uh, using uh, computer network to connect and to do things there are obviously bad people in the world who want to exploit this and who want to uh, extract maximum mileage of it so the people who are doing these cyber attacks are obviously engineers um, who know computer systems well and they are doing it with increased sophistication and when when they do that with increased sophistication they are attacking computer systems across the, the world and what will happen is the cost of repaying the damage is extremely high you have reputational uh, damage you may lose business sometimes there are cyber attacks wherein they take away the uh, all the good things that you do and give it to your competitor such that you go bankrupt and all the, there is enormous social and financial impact so what is happening is there is there are legal implications as well because if some of your ip which is which is some of your inventions are lost then what will happen is you have a loss of opportunity you may not be able to run your businesses you may lose the leverage of being something special in this world and there are many people many entities which have gone bankrupt because of this cyber attack and the worst part of it for individuals like you and me is that they may hack into your mobile they may take your photographs they may morph it and they may do all the dirty things that are, that are possible so there are definitely bad people out there and hence the need to protect ourselves to from such data and privacy breaches is extremely important and as you can see last year alone there was a 6 trillion dollar loss due to cyber attacks and this is enormous and hence everybody there is a everybody has to operate in a elevated risk such that whatever we do on the internet whatever we do in, on the it systems is protected and that is where the cyber security professionals come in and that is why the cyber security professionals are in demand and we look at young engineers like you to see this as a good opportunity for very high level of uh, sophisticated work as well as a very promising career okay so as i said our network connectivity when i say that everybody is connected in this world through so some means of the other so our network connectivity is rapidly increasing and so is the level of cyber security attacks and because of that the good guys want more and more cyber security measures to be put in place and hence there is a lot of job opportunities in in cyber security one of the important things is that you cannot outsource or you cannot tell somebody to implement cyber security in your own house right so what what is required is each one of us has to know what are the minimum things that are required to to system hardening system hardening is nothing but ensuring that your it systems are leak proof okay so while we all of us should have that minimum knowledge and because this is a highly interconnected world economies run on e business today so and then the level of sophistication of the attacks keep uh, just keep on uh, increasing and increasing so when you take up cyber security as a career what will happen is you get to solve complex technical problems you always are on the path of learning and learning something new relearning and uh, you will always be in the path of keeping up to date in the ever growing field of it and obviously there is always high demand for the cyber cyber security personnel and top talent in cyber security always draw huge salary so from from an opportunity perspective this is like a gold mine we need very bright uh, engineers who can tap this potential and the scope is unlimited and sometimes what happens is you get to become a, a hero or a savior for an enterprise if you are able to thwart a uh, cyber attack 
So the amount of visibility that you get is is phenomenal. So I think cyber security in modern times is like a, a, a defense mechanism for uh, for industries and for uh, IT world and even the government. So yeah, exactly. uh, the, the type of importance which is just getting. So recently we have the news of Twitter accounts getting uh, hacked by uh, the people and they ask for ransom monies. And even um, uh, Cognizant was in news for some cyber attacks. Yes. And um, yes. the cyber threat defense solution which Cognizant has and the way it came up. So it is really a, 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 every day people would like to attack you and you have to have a mechanism to protect you. So, so, so definitely yeah. the relevance of uh, uh, cyber security uh, is, is very much uh, because the data is the information and information is very important, very critical for businesses and even governments to run. And uh, in fact, uh, uh, talking on a general perspective, sir, abhi election hone wale hai. so it can be seen that uh, maybe in future they could be in the COVID crisis. Uh, India as a country is not prepared for with the IT to conduct uh, elections online. But, uh, but, but, but many countries are thinking like US election is there. So again, the cyber attack and malforging even can create uh, just pushing out the government. So, so the need and importance of cyber security, which I can understand with your talk to summarize in a simple language to student is if, if IT is required, then cyber security is, has to be there, sir. Absolutely, sir. Absolutely required. If you have a, if you have any IT device in your, at your home or at the office place, it needs to have a, sec a security in place. And right now, it is not only the cyber attacks, but social engineering, which is also a type of cyber attack, is increasing day by day. In the last elections, when the Trump got elected, there was a huge FBI level investigation whether the population of the country or whether the electoral ele voters were socially engineered to believe that the opposition is not good. So algorithms are being developed on how to detect manipulative social engineering methods. They may seem you know, very, very simple at face value. They may seem, those messages may seem very uh, innocent, but slowly over a period of time, the, those very messages actually influence human minds. Now, how do you block them? How do you try to identify them? So that is the new, uh, area of focus in the cybersecurity uh, world. And definitely you have to be an expert in the field so that you can counter attack a, a, a hacker on the other side or the or the, or the malign uh, person uh, the, like, who has uh, some intentions of taking out the information. So definitely this field is uh, very, I can take it as a gamified field of uh, uh, playing levels of security and like people who have, uh, so I think it's quite an exciting career opportunity for yes. viewers or students who want to make career who it's it's challenging and every day you have a new challenge and you have to fight and uh, like you you are a warrior or you are a, you are a savior of information. There will be attacks and you have to defend yourself and maybe also make some counter attack mechanisms so people cannot just enter easily. Yes. So, sir, take, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, taking it forward, like uh, your more guidance on how how the important this field is of cyber security and the typical cyber security uh, issues we have. Um, yes. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, in, in, if we if we go into the typical yes. cyber security offerings, actually, at the underlying is your infrastructure security, which infrastructure can be your uh, uh what do you say it can be your hardware setup it can be your computer room and within that i know it is physical security but still it is infrastructure and then it what what is very important is your network security so first you need to have stable and robust networks network is nothing but a communication mechanism between two computers or a communication mechanism between a set of computers. So now, how do you ensure that people don't hack into that network layer is part of the infrastructure security. Now, 
as we know, there are seven layers of security. The lowest is your in this world is your network security, and the highest comes to your application security. So once you are sure that there is enough measures in place to ensure that people just don't hack into your IP address, people don't hack into your network. So that is the basic level of security that is that that needs to be done. And after that, at the application layer and at the router level, at your DNS level, at your uh, Wi-Fi uh, connectivity level, at your uh, modem level, at your devices, you also need to ensure that there is a threat and vulnerability focus. You there has to be a focus to ensure that there is that we are able to first of all identify what are our vulnerabilities in the system. For example, if I write a computer program and if somebody uh, is able to hack into that computer program, let us assume I have a computer program which displays on the screen, hello world. If a cyber attack person comes in and then the application or the code should be strong enough such that he's not able to change the message. It should not be like hello world becomes a hello monster. It should not be like that. So there is, so I, even at the program level, there has to be mechanisms in place and there are programming standards, which will, which is an established science and people in this world, in this domain will definitely get to understand. And once people choose this career, we will definitely train them. So how do you identify vulnerabilities in your IT system? And once you identify those vulnerabilities, then you will know that, hey, there could be a threat from somebody who is going to exploit my vulnerability and thereby do an attack. So there are products, there are mechanisms in place to do a threat and vulnerability management. So this needs to be run 24 bar seven in enterprise systems. And all major IT systems, whether it is Google, whether it is your uh, internet, www, or whether it is any office or college system, they always have 24 by seven applications in place. The only job is to check whether there is any unwarranted attack that is being attempted. So that is what is called threat and vulnerability management. So you keep try to keep the bad guys away as far as possible. So that is the step number one. Once you ensure that your doors are closed, then <clears throat> you can also have people inside the room or inside the organization who can be the bad people or who may be good people but have bad intentions or there could be people who are naive, who are innocent, who may not know that, hey, sharing my friend's Aadhaar card ID is not a good thing. There are many people who may not even know. They will say that, hey, anyways, you have shared with me, I will let me share it with somebody else. So that level, that is what is called, so ensuring that the right people have the right access is the concept called digital identity. So for example, when I'm a college student, I will have a roll number, I will have a batch number, and maybe my college, college will have a fingerprint scanner saying that, okay, when I put my thumb, it will it open the door for me. Now, how does that happen? When I put my thumb, my thumb imprint goes into the computer system. The computer system is able to match my thumb with a valid roll number. And only when it is mapped to a valid roll number, then the computer will know that, oh, this roll number is valid. And hence, he is a valid student and is a bona fide student and let's open the door. So. This is the simplest form of digital identity. Now, within that, you have a lot. So I can be a student, I can be a lecturer, I can be a head of the department, I can be a director, or I can be the owner of the college. So once my identity is established, I will have necessary access to different systems. As a student, I will have access only to the classroom as a, and maybe to the library. As if I am a professor, then I will have access to the research paper. If I am the principal, I may have access to other colleges. If I am the uh, 
in the management or uh, committee then maybe i will have access to the uh, to directly talk to the government so all depends on my digital identity digital identity is nothing but who am i in in the internet world so and this is a big science in itself and there are many companies investing millions and millions of dollars to ensure that the digital identity is is protected and the digital identity is maintained another type of uh, security that is extremely important is data protection and privacy what does that mean suppose i am going into amazon and i am placing an order for a book when i place a order in the book i specify my credit card and i specify a certain amount uh, specify the cost of the book and i hit a submit button when i hit a submit button it it goes through my router onto the internet and then it goes into the firewall of the amazon system and then it goes into their inventory and um, selling application right now so there is a lot of traffic it it passes through various gateways we do not want people to be intercepting my data during this journey and stealing my credit card details so that is what is called data protection across on the internet now if i compare my the same thing within the enterprise for example i am in a college when i am in a college i have access to the college information system as a student i should be seeing only my data i should not be able to see the evaluation uh, scores of other students point number one i should not be able to see the evaluation the uh, scores of my own sheet but being done by my professor but not yet finalized only when the professor wants the result to be published should i should i be able to see so that is what is called data protection in a bank as an example the ceo may be able to see the risks that are associated with providing a loan to a customer whereas a clerk due to financial confidentiality should not be able to be provided a opportunity to see those risks because what will happen the clerk with his immature mind can spread the word that hey you are not a good customer and then things may go bad so at a data level protection is required and and hence the data protection and privacy is extremely important but overarching for all of this whether it is threat or uh, threat or whether it is digital identity or whether it is data protection and privacy the most important and at a high level what you need is a set of rules what are the set of rules that govern my cyber security space these rules can be specific to your organization and there are certain rules that are specified by the government and there are certain rules which are specified by the industry as an example if you take a bank there that could be a rule that okay a person who has the authority to approve a check should not have the authority to withdraw money at the same time so which basically means that i cannot write my own check i cannot I, and i should not be allowed to approve my own check and i should not be allowed to withdraw money on my own check which i myself have approved okay so this is a rule so that is why you will have one person writing a check it will go for approval to person b and then you take the check and go to person c and he will again validate the check and then he will give you the money so this is a process and this is a rule and this rule is set not by the bank but it is set by the rbi so rbi is the central authority or let us say the the business which sets the rule and which is followed by every bank and then you may have a government rule saying that if a person is going into uh, a bank and is withdrawing money then obviously he cannot withdraw all the money in this world or cannot withdraw all the money in his account and then ship it or transfer it to an overseas account so that could be a government rule 
because the government may think that hey, if you ship money to Seychelles or if you ship money to Pakistan or if you ship money to Dubai, maybe it is illegal. So those are government, government rules. So governance, risk and compliance is nothing but a set of rules that are defined by your own company, by the industry and by the government. And once those rules are set, then according to those rules, you have to do your threat and vulnerability management. You have to do your digital identity and you have to do your data protection and privacy. One of the interesting things under data protection and privacy is that you not only have to encrypt your data at rest, but you also have to encrypt your data in motion such that your static data yes. as well as your data on the internet is protected. So, Bob, okay. uh, taking forward, you, you very well told about the what cybersecurity is, its importance, and its ever-changing domain. Cybersecurity, the rules and the definitions today will be absolute in maybe two years, four years, or even two months. You never know. So, it is really exciting to know in depth about how the uh, cybersecurity layers mechanism work. And Subramaniam sir has also given a very good definition in our own terms of understanding cybersecurity and the levels of uh, uh, authentication or rights people can get through the example of college and bank, bank which is uh, uh, very vivid. And uh, now taking it forward, sir, can, uh, like uh, I would like to ask two questions: like uh, why a career in cybersecurity and uh, uh, why a person should use cybersecurity as a career and uh, what are the key skills required or uh, yeah so you have a slider yes so <laughs> it's great yes, that is a, um, we, the, so these were actually based on some discussions I had with Subramaniam sir so we thought of uh, definitely covering these areas and then we'll be opening up for more questions so yes uh, we want to know more about skill if I'm a mechanical or an electrical engineer or a computer science engineer, how it is going to make it a difference. So also friends, I would like to give a small message that uh, uh, your engineering would be of three to four years, but your career is of 40 years of 30 years, what you want to make. So don't uh, put yourself on a color of say a, a circuit branch or a core branch or a computer science branch. Your only branch should be a branch which is an ever-learning branch. I think what Subramaniam sir has studied in his college days or what Shreya is studying today might not be relevant to the industry. And uh, even today, Subramaniam sir would be going and reading an article about new, the new cyber security attack and the new possible thing because the cognizant uh, looks at him for maintaining and managing a lot of uh, the work areas or verticals where he's a director for. So updating and uh, upskilling ourselves is very important. But still, what are the basic skills required to make a cyber security mein ek long term career? Bana sakte and what could be the possible paths? And uh, most importantly, what, what could be the future holding for in the cyber security? So, uh, Subramaniam sir, I request you to please uh, address these uh, issues and these areas of uh, our, con our, we want to have more knowledge on this. Yes, sir. So, cyber security is, uh, is, has, is always there and will always continue to be as long as people use computers, people use uh, handheld devices and are on the internet, cyber security, and we use IT systems, cyber security is definitely there. And with more and more adoption, the need for cybersecurity increases and hence the job demands also keep increasing. And with the threats, the type of threats keep, that keep changing every, every day, every now and then, it becomes imperative that we are always up to date on, on these fields and we always keep ourselves on the edge of learning and on the edge of cybersecurity delivery. Now, so hence, this is a very promising field. Brilliance is always rewarded. And you definitely get top dollars and a very good career if you want to move into this field of cybersecurity. Now, what is it that takes? 
to become a, a good cyber security expert. Now, all of us are from engineering colleges and we have cracked the entrance exam, uh, which, uh, which proves that yes, academically we are very bright and more importantly, we have very good aptitude skills. The reason why aptitude skills is extremely important because we have to be very nimble on our feet and very quick in our thinking to identify a potential cyber threat and to quickly identify what could be the solution for such a cyber threat. So, and that comes with aptitude. Technology, subject, those all become uh, our secondary. But ability to think, in a very logical manner is extremely uh, important. Second is, there are many people who just come there, come to the office, just do their job and then go away. That is not what uh, makes a cybersecurity expert. We first have to understand why do are we doing that job? Why is the company paying me to do a certain job, right? So there is obviously a, a business impact. So that understanding of the business impact is extremely important and then some basic knowledge of how computers work you need not be a computer science engineer you need not be a phd scholar any engineering branch student can pick up uh, cyber security skills the reason is that most of the companies provide training on how to become a cyber security professional how to become a cyber security expert of late many colleges are also saying so this field is open for, for anyone. Now, as part of this learning, some amount of computer knowledge is required and some amount of scripting is also required. When I say scripting, we should know what is Java, we should, we should uh, or maybe .NET, or maybe PLSQL, or shell scripting, or Unix. So some amount of computer awareness and how a computer works is required. Now, uh, if people are coming from completely uh, non-IT related uh, fields, that is also okay because learning computer science is not, or computer language is not difficult. As long as you have the aptitude, you are more than welcome to take it forward. So now, once you join the uh, a cybersecurity uh, role, once you end up in a cybersecurity role, you, you can do enhanced application development, application maintenance of existing security products. You, can, you will be implementing software which will help enhance the cyber, uh, cyber security of your systems and you can grow in that ladder. Some of the typical uh, jobs are that you can be a penetration tester. What, 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 ex what exactly is uh, penetration testing? Penetration testing is nothing but punching finding flaws in your code such that you are able to identify security loopholes, security gaps, such that people don't steal information by writing another program which will read your program and steal information. So that is what is called uh, penetration testing. You can be a security systems administrator, and then you can be a forensic computer analyst, and this forensic is also extremely uh, interesting. For example, two days ago or three days ago, I was I was uh, hearing the news that somebody threatened somebody on Twitter. The person who got threatened uh, filed a police complaint. The police arrested this uh, the person uh, the culprit somewhere in uh, in some remote corner of the country. Now, how did they find? They found it by doing forensic analysis. They found out by tracing the uh, person who received the message, by tracing the IP addresses, by tracing the servers, by tracing the uh, mobile networks. And finally, they found out hey, who, who has actually created this message. So all that comes under forens forensics. And then you, you can grow up, grow in your ladder to become an IT security consultant, wherein you will be advising people. And then the ultimate is that you become the chief information security officer of a large enterprise. So, so this is a very promising career. The best brains definitely will have a, a lot of good challenges thrown at them. They will definitely accomplish all of them. And then the sky is the limit. And hence, 
you you also get very good salaries if you if you get onto this uh, cyber security path definitely a salary and an ever learning environment uh, uh, and a uh, uh, challenging uh, and these are probably the things which is also taking you high subramaniam sir that uh, you you it's quite exciting to come up and face a new challenge it's like discovering a new drug and there is a covid yes, every every month in it yes, so i was just talking <laughs> to uh, one of the panel and uh, the amount of uh, threats and the amount of attacks uh, it is prone to especially the government department and in fact uh, we also as young indians were trying to raise voice on the making our government portal cyber is secure so that the phishing attacks and could be uh, eliminated so also okay. would like to know the uh, the future you, you have really uh, given a very good insider that subramaniam sir that any graduate whether you are a mechanical or you are you are an engineer or not it doesn't matter even if you are from mca but you have an aptitude and you have yeah. a, a some basic knowledge of computer science and you have an you want to have an interest that how the business get impacted and you know a basic of some scripting languages you can learn and take this path it's not about yes. how strong your boat is it's important how you can row your boat in deep waters to matlab ye nahi hai ki aap bas give me a strong boat i can go to the ocean or cross the river ultimately you have to row your boat so yes. rowing is important understanding the streams of water is important and once you are in, into the river there is always only one thing left to row otherwise yes. you will perish yeah so i have also come across uh, sir uh, i have also come across students in uh, uh, in the in our engineering colleges who have taken some interest into this and they are actually participating in the bug bounty programs bug bounty is like yes. for example facebook or apple they they have this bug bounty on their specific websites i will get this uh, website shortly but uh, where their job is to identify flaws in the system and that is the first thing of a penetration tester and they are actually earning income while still in the college yes so you for finding faults attacking the, the, the organizations call you these days you please attack our systems please make a uh, penetrate try to hack our systems so that we can know how secure we are so yeah. uh, so i think the the power of internet and networking also lies in the do pose which are left and uh, with the, with the support of cyber security things are evolving going to the fourth to fifth generation of uh, business 5g which is coming up it's a it's, it cannot hold with the bound with the protection of cyber security and making the the network more more secure so also sir what would be the upcoming trends as the next slide goes ki ab aage kya hai cyber security mein so that uh, a person like you knows the things in advance so uh, how what uh, we also discussed about the various career paths possibly available the uh, friends and students these are the things if you want to express uh, in your campus placements or in your life to become a successful career expert these are the things which you are directly getting from the best in industry so what is the future of all the upcoming trends as it uh, so some light and then uh, we come back to the main topic and have some question sir i think there is some yes hello am i audible yes sir yes, yes you are audible now. so uh, one thing is cloud security the reason why i think cloud security is that while the amazon web cloud uh, aws which is which is the short form of uh, uh, amazon cloud as well as azure which is microsoft cloud as well as gcp which is google cloud platform while these cloud platforms are there since many years maybe 10 years or 15 years the adoption is right now increasing so because previously all the companies used to have their application systems in their own servers right now they do not want to carry that uh, uh, infrastructure cost so everything is right now is moving on to cloud now, how do you protect your applications on cloud is one of the current in demand things so 
while the cloud as an infrastructure, the Amazon, the Microsoft, and Google provide the basic security covering, how do you uh, how do you ensure that your application security is maintained is is something which is in hot demand right now? I think uh, this. Uh... There is a cyber security issue, and we are losing sir, and because of the internet uh, issue. But uh, we are getting a lot of good comments from students. After this, probably slide will go back and take uh, the queries. Uh, the students, this session is an uh, important one. If you any time in your the campus placement would attend, you can definitely quote that yes, you have uh, learned this. And uh, cyber security is an upcoming uh, area of generating a lot of jobs. So we we hold that before uh, we again can connect with sir and get some more guidance and take your queries. Uh, technology demands are always there, and uh, these things uh, do happen in an online thing. And it used to happen when I have the best speakers in my college. So we have uh, the mic not working or the electricity going down. So uh, we uh, we have uh, learned from him that uh, cyber security could be uh, an area which is possibly uh, taken care by any student and also uh, the type of jobs which are available uh, in cyber security. And uh, the technologies which uh, upcoming the nature of uh, jobs which within cyber security you can make and uh, also uh, on uh, what is the future technology uh, which uh, is available and uh, we have sell back so i was just giving the summary and uh, just trying to recollect of all the knowledge and it is all okay sir i understand because of the internet bandwidth issues, flicking and work from home. And um, to be at the position where the Subramaniam sir ha is, he has to at, at times work in the, uh, the the Western clock zone also. And for that, uh, the sun never sets down. So the moment it, it yes, goes sir. down in India, the clients in US get gets up and the call goes on. Yeah. So sir, yeah. we are all set. So, so and, sorry, uh, sir. Uh, very sorry okay. for the network uh, disturbance. My apologies. Uh, uh, I think uh, uh, we're talking uh, about the future of cloud security yes. in Amazon, Google, yeah. and Microsoft. So, yes. So first is uh, app securing your applications on cloud is uh, is the in thing right now because though the cloud uh, as an infrastructure was existing, the adoption is increasing increasing in these these days. That is the in thing in the future, and actually the work is already underway is about uh, data analytics. For example, if I am a user, people want intelligent systems to understand my user behavior. I can be a bank employee. I can be a student. I can be an IT professional. I can be in any industry. When I am using a computer system, what is how, how am I behaving? Am I trying to, as a simple example, by trying to get access to a specific application or a specific system to which I should not be having access. Maybe I'm just trying 100 times to log in. Maybe 100 times I'm trying to search, hey, what is it that my professor is currently doing? Yeah. Right. So this is based on data. I am not violating any principles, but what is happening is I am trying to hack into a system or I'm trying to do something fishy. So this, although this does not raise any red signals, there are algorithms being developed which will identify a pattern of behavior of a person using an IT system. So that requires enormous amount of data and then analyzing the data such that some meaningful patterns or some meaningful behavioral patterns come out is is something that many organizations are currently doing. And once they have not yet cracked it. 
So that is what I am calling as data analytics. Once the data analytics is done, and once we are able to formulate some models of user behavior, then we can use these models and fit in the past historical data and try to predict upcoming threats and up, uh, potential vulnerabilities. So that is so that is a mixture of immense knowledge of cybersecurity, data analytics, and artificial intelligence. All these three will eventually come together. Not now. We have not cracked the puzzle yet, but studies are underway. How do you uh, detect user behavior? So that is going to be the future. With cybersecurity, data analysis, and AI. Yes, all three coming together to further improve your cyber threat detection and cyber threat prevention. Great, sir. So I'm just noting and putting it as a um, as a, as a quotation. So yes, sir. Uh, um, that that holds as a future for people. Then definitely cybersecurity with the analysis and AI can predict. So probably um, a person who is trying to attack the system will know that yes, you are vulnerable, and he may attack you to so again rechange, and um, there will be a continuous uh, defense mechanism working before the attack happens. So it's like uh, uh, some missiles yes, coming, sir. and before they are before they hit the earth, they are um, you can uh, track them with the energy, and you can just destroy them in the air. So it's it's great and yes, phenomenal. Sir. I'm I, I'm quite excited. Uh, provided my learning capabilities are there, it I can explore this as a a very good career option for. But for students like Shreya, this uh, the cyber security is uh, an upcoming option. And the way uh, the in-depth analysis which you have given. So let's take a couple of questions. Shreya, you have something to ask? Please. Uh, yes, sir. Go ahead. I have a question to ask. So, what kind of prerequisite knowledge we will require to enter into the cybersecurity world? Okay, so the prerequisite knowledge is some so amount of actually this is knowledge. something what, what what actually can help you to being a cybersecure because sir is already yeah. told that any graduate can be a cybersecurity expert. So, what what addition if you if you want to be a cybersecurity expert, uh, what what additional knowledge you you that helps you? Okay, so like the first and, uh, yes, so the first uh, and utmost thing is that we should have some analytical thinking. That power of analytical thinking and logical aptitude is required. Because for those who do not know computer science at all, people think that a computer is a very intelligent machine, whereas it has zero intelligence. We have to instruct the computer in the simplest language on what to perform. So, and that comes with logical and analytical thinking. So, since all of us are have cracked entrance exams, have come here and are doing good studies, so I'm sure that all of us have that. Second is some amount of scripting knowledge is required. For example, we should know either uh, C, C++ or any one is required. So, if you know one, you definitely can pick up others. So it is not it is not that there is a set a specific set that is mandatory. No. Once you start your career, you will eventually learn because learning numbers work. So some amount of uh, scripting is required. And in all our colleges, C or C is being taught, so that, that should be fine. Okay, and then eagerness to learn. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Okay. So we also have few questions on. Uh, 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 sir, I had another question. Mm -hmm. Sir, yes, how, we, how can you prevent cyber attacks? How can you prevent cyber attacks? The first thing that I tell my daughter is, I have two school going daughters. The first thing that I tell is, do not do anything that invites a cyber attack. For example, if she is on Facebook or if she is on um, WhatsApp, I say do not post your pictures. Right? So self defense is the first. Second is, what are the things that you need to uh, prevent a cyber attack? 
on a personal in your personal uh, home you ensure i i am giving you examples okay in your personal home okay. ensure that your router your wireless is password protected so that only your mobile phone can get connected you don't want somebody on the street to connect your wifi network right so right. that is one second you for the same wifi it has an identifier right so don't let that identifier be known to the outside world so that otherwise people will even try to hack into your uh, wifi network by guessing your password okay right? third is third is do not uh, do not store password let do not store documents without any password right so ensure that you keep changing your password make make it increasingly complex so these are some of the things that you can do at your own individual capacity now when you go into the enterprise or when you go into an office you will have firewalls in your network you will also have firewalls on your personal computer firewall is nothing but a, a prevention mechanism to prevent unauthorized accesses so in a network or in let's say the office you will have network security and then you will have your own uh, identity and based on your identity your your job definition is is found out and based on your job definition you will have access to some system you will not have access to some system now whether how and all this is the, is done by cyber security uh, folk providing you access not providing you access what type what level of access you require or what like inside your computer network who not to allow all this is done by your uh, cyber security uh, folks okay thank you okay. so much sir i'm sure how you prevent, prevent your cyber attack in yes, spite of that people are smart enough people mm. sometimes steal your colleague's password and then get it so that is where as a human as an individual we all have to have some that self discipline not to share password and right, not sir. to create easily guessable passwords yes, yes, all right sir thank you so much sir okay and uh, you. Uh, you rightly pointed out something very important is the identity uh, identification access management so iam mm -hmm. is something of uh, this, this is for all the students who would like to say in the interviews or in the coming field that i am a cyber security expert and uh, the interviewer if if probably you are into the final rounds of a hire package maybe subramaniam sir would be taking your interview and then he can ask you okay what are the mechanism you would follow to prevent cyber security attack in your home so these are all the answers now given by sir so and in case you are attending a cognizant interview please you can quote i i heard it from subramaniam sir so no yes, one can yes. then <laughs> deny about the expertise yes, yes. so yes. bringing the lighter yes. mode to the conversation as we are about to the closure of the thing there are a good number of questions coming in uh, there is a question which is always being asked by students so what happens to cyber security it is a very attractive branch to bring students to college especially with uh, colleges which are offering multidiscipline and um, if you go and take admission and there is a computer science with cyber security and these options the people get tempted yes let's do it so how and what is the minimum if we, if someone is actually studying cyber security so what are the possible good reference websites you can give them uh, which are easily freely available and what is the minimum knowledge suppose someone is doing mtech in cyber security or btech in cyber security so what type of uh, minimum exposure or knowledge he should gain so that he can say ki yes i have done a graduation or a post graduation program in cyber security so what is the minimum industry expectation if you hire someone only on the lines of cyber security sir okay you see when we hire uh, it depends upon the grade or the role in which we hire uh, but before that i will come so one of the uh, good sites or training sites So for cyber security is uh, Udemy. We can go into Udemy, U D E M Y, dot com, and there, if you type in the word cyber security, you will get tons of trainings. 
training materials and then most of it is free and you can enroll and learn so internet and google is is the best way for you to uh, get your hands on to understand what is cyber security and udemy is udemy simply learn are are very good uh, avenues for learning second is when uh, if when we recruit from uh, colleges we go with the understanding that cyber security is new for the student and hence we look for aptitude and some scripting knowledge to hire people and that depends upon the role that they will be performing if we are going to hire people let's say uh, an mtech student or a phd student into cyber security world as a it security consultant or as a architect then our questions will be around hey how do you set up enterprise architecture for security can you tell us what is the definition of authentication authorization how many levels of authorization do you have how do you enter authentication in a in a highly connected world and th there is a concept called federation wherein for example you can see that even there are many websites which which ask uh, which uh, before they allow you in ask you to sign in through your google account right so your google password your google account is used to get into third party websites so that is a concept called federation so now how do you ensure federation how do you ensure data privacy in all of this how do you ensure that when one site is talking to the other site data is not breached so we go deeper and deeper as the uh, role becomes important and important so but fundamental what i'm trying to say is that the basics have to be very clear on in whatever subject that we are studying in whatever subject we are studying the basics have to be very very clear for example those who are studying computer science they should be absolutely clear on data structures they should be absolutely clear on memory management right people who are studying on civil engineering their fundamentals have to be very clear if i ask a civil engineering student that hey, tomorrow when you get a job in larson and tubro as an example and if that gentleman asks you hey can you tell me the composition of concrete then it should come like second nature right so uh, what i'm saying is as long as our, our person's fundamentals are clear the they will be able to guide through the, glide through the interviews and based on the role the depth of those questions will increase So yes, Shreya, you have a question to ask. Yes, sir. Sir, I have heard that Linux is more safe than Windows when it comes to threats and everything. Yes, yes. In a way, it is. It is correct. Windows is. Uh, it's a difficult and uh, uh, system that has been created. Now, Microsoft has. A, it, there is a perception that yes, Windows is not as strong as Linux. The best. that has ever been produced by the microsoft world was windows nt but unfortunately they have discontinued it but yeah the number of uh, cyber attacks on linux are fairly less so one uh, we are taking some questions from uh, the audience also so uh, smriti kumari has a question about how do we come to know that any link is malicious as they look very normal so it's a, it's a general question for all people like uh, how to understand some some link coming in is malicious or can prone to access our uh, data or device so any okay. general um, sir okay so uh, okay if you are suspecting something to be malicious don't click on it so that's safety is, is the best thing as an example for, for let's say we are all students of lncd college let us assume that my your, uh, website is www.lncd.co.in or let's say it's lncd.org right now suppose you get a link saying that it's www.mycollege.lncd.co.in then 
it should provide you a, a indicator that hey there is nothing called my college within lncity okay lncity itself is a college so first you should read your url and if that link gives you some doubt then do not click point number 1 point number 2 is do not open emails or do not do not open any message from unknown sources so always avoid that even in our office we have we have strict instructions that always look at the url so it is www.cognizant.com if you see any spelling mistake wherein an i is missing or a n is missing do not click on that okay so and if observing the url is the first step second do not open any sorry i'll tell you first step is do not open any emails that you are not aware of okay once you open that email if you find any links which are weird which you have not heard of do not open so this is prevention sure sir so uh, coming back to the next question it's technical i don't know much about but uh, which is more secure https or hsts also where hsts is used i don't know what this hsts is sir riya jain wants to know okay http https is the uh, is the most uh, or let us say an established uh, uh, protocol okay and i would i would recommend that this is what has, uh, should be should be should be followed http is is uh, hsts is a strict transport security it's a web, web security policy mechanism that helps to protect websites against man in the middle attacks but finally it is https which is the industry standard and which we uh, should be following sure we'll take a couple of questions and then we wind up uh, in the interest of time so uh, what is the top cyber security concern current businesses face today the top security concern which my company as well as others are uh, uh, have suffered yes. is the ransomware attack uh, it was quite inaudible ransomware attack Oh. Yeah, ransomware attack. Am I am I audible now? Yes, yes, yes you sir, are audible. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So the hot thing on cyber attacks by the bad guys is ransomware attack. What is it that they do? They typically take the ID of a uh, uh, of a valid person. They sneak into your network, and then they sit there quietly, okay, for the right time. and during the time where they are sitting they what they do is they infiltrate other uh, computers other servers and they start encrypting the data there within those servers and once they do that then that's when the company wakes up hey i am not able to uh, read this data anymore this server is not available so they have when they encrypt they hold the keys the bad guys hold the keys and then they will tell the company that hey only if you pay me certain amount of money i will open the key for you so this is the thing that that is uh, that is going on and actually there is a comp- there is a there is there, there is something called a dark web you know mm. you have yes, this wide internet and then you have this dark web so and these Uh, all these things happen in the dark web and then you uh, the ransom is collected in bitcoin and then it is shared so i do not know uh, who attacked uh, twitter that also happened through insider attack and i do not know how much money twitter is paying so yes That i was sitting with point. someone very senior in the cyber security and even they have uh, you know, at times they need to pay to people uh, in some country specifically he named me i don't want to name that country but they ask a, a, a huge amount to just unlock the iphone so so all yeah. the, definitely um, the carrier into the good cyber security is always there but there is there is also possibility in, in the dark web <laughs> so but yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
and and those folks are also super brilliant um, uh, cyber guys but doing bad things so it is very important that uh, uh, where the direction of your weapon is it should be yeah. always towards the the person who is attacking rather than towards yourself because all these dark web and other things finally don't land up to a long term career at times Perfect. you will be finally caught because uh, as subramanyam sir was telling that when you enter cyber media your footprints will be traced today or tomorrow you cannot just hide out and you cannot just get away there is always a, a mechanism to trace you back maybe today tomorrow or in one month or one year so forensic cyber science is is very updated I, and the country and the world today needs india india's brain power to protect not only india but the world with the coming cyber attacks cyber security is not something or uh, an extended arm of an it wing but it is to be an included package in all the products being supplied to customers and i don't think any customer today would be um, requesting a service without a cyber security bundle into it or a security measures uh, uh, not in place so so we uh, there are a lot of technical questions coming in but to generalized uh, we uh, we would like to now sum up and uh, in the interest of time and our viewers uh, we really thank you cyber security uh, has been an upcoming field and subramanian sir today has given a, a basic awareness about what cyber security is how it works what are the different levels what are the different types of cyber security the operations available how what is required to be uh, expert in cyber security what different roles within the organization presently are available what is the future holding we also touched upon the online courses like udemy and others and uh, the basic minimum expectation also from a cyber security expert was uh, very uh, elaborately and explained to the students for the interest those who want to be a cyber security expert and taking forward we try to take some q and a cyber security is a very vast topic and uh, the speaker like subramanyam sir who has been uh, a person who has uh, crafted a lot of cyber security policies and have been seeing them growing in years and years has a, 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 an ocean of knowledge about it so putting all the ocean in a glass of water in a glass is not possible just in one hour so but, but still um, the intentions of uh, subramanyam sir i just called him i really thank cognizant technology solutions for uh, for accepting uh, our invite and uh, being an important player for contributing in career pathshala the interest of companies like cognizant and subramanyam sir is to impart whatever knowledge they have of it and to make india a stronger it nation which is already post covid to 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 give its more prominence power to the world of making india a digital super country a super country which which has all the brains and all the uh, the will to learn and learn and relearn and on these notes uh, i would uh, request subramanyam sir to have his final concluding words for the students and for the people who want to make a career in cyber security your final comments and your final words uh, before we conclude sir okay sir thank you so much sir on uh, anurag sir for your kind words i am really honored to be uh, part of your large initiative i am really honored to be talking to you Yeah, uh, thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to uh, interact with the students. And on behalf of Cognizant, it's been a privilege spending one hour with our students and more importantly, you sir. So it is uh, indeed a fantastic experience, and uh, we are deeply indebted to you. So uh, my advice to all of the students is: have your fundamentals absolutely strong. because in the work field and the study field are very different whatever you study will be put into use in your work field and in your work field you 
nobody is going to tell you what concept of study you need to apply okay so that depends upon your individual intelligence and and your career growth depends upon your effective communication quick thinking and very good attitude attitude is reflected in how well you have understood the fundamentals i have given one or two examples right so cyber security is not a static field it keeps on increasing in its complexity on a daily basis and that complexity should not help us lose interest but that complexity should help us drive our learning and that complexity should help us in doing more and more interesting uh, stuff and cyber security definitely allows you to keep your learning pace on it will always keep you interested it will always challenge you to get the best out of you okay and the rewards are very fulfilling as i said earlier and i have shown also if you are able to prevent a cyber attack in against your company or against your college then you are the real hero there are very few people who can actually do that so the thrill is always there the excitement is always there in this field and it is also accompanied with a fat paycheck so it's it's a good it's a very good field to be in so be the avengers of tomorrow and uh, save the world from cyber attack probably the marvel yes. new the marvel the marvel new story would be on cyber attack and maybe uh, it it's, it would be all about who knows that uh, the next big marvel marvel movie would be on cyber attack and how you, the avengers the new avengers avatar has uh, could be a someone like an iron man or hulk could be in a cyber security person who just changes things so we watched so many uh, thriller movies so we thank you sir and uh, we 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 express our gratitude uh, for you coming all the way uh, it it was a great opportunity uh, to hear you and personally for me to connect with you again and uh, sir is also into the academic advisory board of quite a good number of colleges universities guiding academia to grow up it is all a giving back to society a huge respect to people like you a true indian born indian citizen who would like india to flourish grow and give back to their society the best what they can and uh, it's not an easy job just uh, uh, to hold the position like yours i think the the one hour uh, 17 minutes live we were and 5 minutes before the session you might have got a good number of emails messages which after this you will be responding but uh, on behalf of the student fraternity a high respect and thanks and gratitude to you sir for coming back and uh, sharing your experience a uh, big thanks to cognizant for the uh, helping us to reach out to you and uh, your kind gesture for the students will definitely be an encouragement for students to look upon cyber security as a career of choice as a career of future and uh, i will definitely look at students uh, just uh, meeting you in pune office and shaking hands and telling that i heard you in career pathshala sir i was looking at you and it was a great day taking a selfie and putting it on the facebook page but i, I am with the person who taught me who, who ignited and gave confidence to me that i can be a cyber security expert so career pathshala is bringing lot of drona charges to eklavya who is sitting at home in internet in online fashion learning and believing in themselves that yes whatever engineering field i am and whether my faculty is there or not these type of sessions will give you a passion and inspiration to do something differently and from there you can take guidance from us please register at www.citop.in the registrations are not closed those who have not registered and also any of your queries please send to career pathshala 2020@gmail.com we will try to reach out to the experts and get back to you let's create an a, a possible environment of learning learning is not restricted to classrooms learning is all about 
your will to learn and all this what is happening is happening with the support of all colleges all uh, uh, yuva colleges across india the industry body like ci coming up and helping only and only with the support of industries like cognizant and this is all for students like shreya uh, who is here and uh, she can now feel that just this one and a half hours of interacting with personalities like uh, subramaniam sir is is something which will give you a positive mindset about uh, believing in your future and creating it for you for this uh, for your business for your family and for india as a country so final comments from shreya before we log off and okay. say goodbye to our uh, um, honorable guest and uh, the speaker for the day we would definitely want subramaniam sir to come back again and again uh, not only in in a technology form but on a lighter note also sir sure, so, so thank you so many shreya, thanks to you yes. Many thanks to you, sir, for having me, and many thanks, Freya, for being a fantastic host and a great student. So, Thank thanks so a lot. I'm a, it's a privilege to be talking to uh, all of you, and so, uh, 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 thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Shreya, your final note before we sign off. You are the guiding so part. We are here for you guys. Thank you so much for guiding us in the right direction, sir. I I'm sure all of the viewers who are watching us can implement this in some way in our lives. It has been really a great day today. Great. So thank you so much, sir, and all the viewers who have registered. Yeah, uh, we, we, you, you, your registration is there. Dilip God, you don't worry about that. In case you feel anything, do write to Kajal Parshala. Thank you so much, sir. Signing off for the third day of Kajal Parshala. we really thank uh, subramaniam sir and uh, we hope uh, that uh, the uh, his words his wisdom his his passion you can reach out to him on his linkedin account and uh, just tag and say thank you sir for being here at kaya parshala thank you so much sir do take care namaskar thank sir you. thank you sir thanks thanks everybody have a nice time thank you